My charge in this presentation is to compare and contrast the medial pivot prosthesis with that of a posterior stabilized knee. My conflicts of interest are that I receive royalties from Microport, that I work with Microport as a consultant, and I have decreased my commitment to the University of Michigan so that there is no conflict of commitment through doing these consulting activities. The clinical case is that of a 55-year-old man who has a total knee replacement with which he's unsatisfied. He's unsatisfied because it has anterior knee pain and because he feels that his implant doesn't seem to quote fit unquote his leg appropriately. I believe that anterior knee pain is a function of anterior posterior instability. To explain, in gait there are large posterior to anterior forces which must be managed by the musculoskeletal system. And the problem of anterior knee pain could be paradoxical motion. Paradoxical motion is a type of motion that was found first by Comistec and Dennis doing video fluoroscopy. It was an unexpected finding because they believed that these posterior cruciate retaining knees should quote roll back unquote as the knee joint flexed. They believed that the posterior cruciate ligament should keep the femur backwards on the tibia very much as suggested by the four bar link model. When the femur in fact slid forward as you see in the video this was to them a paradox and so it was called paradoxical motion. Patients with AP instability do not function as well as others and I think it could be because of this paradoxical motion. Let's start the explanation by looking at normal gait. In normal gait the green line which represents the action on the force plate under this skeleton as he walks. You can see after heel strike that green line falls behind the knee. That's called the external moment because it's trying to flex the knee. The mechanism by which we prevent our knee from flexing further is by contraction of the quadriceps muscle. This normal gait requires a balance between the internal moment and the external moment. But if we analyze this gait slightly differently, we see that just after heel strike, the vector is significant directed from posterior to anterior onto the floor. And if we resolve that vector into both horizontal and vertical components, we can see that there's a very significant horizontal component. And if the foot is firmly fixed to the floor, then the body, the opposite leg, and the femur on the support side all tend to move forward while the foot is fixed. And that force shows up as a posterior to anterior force trying to push the femur off the top of the tibia. If the femur can move paradoxically, that is if it can move forward, the patient feels unstable and very often walks with an altered gait pattern. Altered gait pattern is called a quadriceps avoidance gait. Note here that the patient takes a shorter stride, the overall cadence of gait is slower, and there's a slight forward lean of the shoulders as the patient walks. What this accomplishes is making the vector on the floor through the force plate go right through the knee. When seen initially, it was believed that because there was no external moment, the internal moment was minimized, and this might be because the patient was attempting to avoid using the quadriceps, thus the name quadriceps avoidance gait. But what this has also done is greatly decreased the posterior to anterior force you can see here by resolving that vector. And what this has done is decreased the posterior ant to anterior force that is attempting to push the femur off the top of the tibia. This gait is certainly a quadriceps avoidance gait, but it might also be a paradoxical motion avoidance gait. And if a patient 
can't walk slowly, can't use the quadriceps avoidance gait, and has to walk faster, then that extensor mechanism is exposed to those significant posterior to anterior loads, and that can be what causes anterior knee pain. Patients either adjust the gait to accommodate the instability, or end up with significant anterior knee pain. AP stability after a total knee replacement must be provided by the prosthesis and the ligaments. In a standard posterior cruciate ligament retaining knee, you see here that the ligament is modeled as being somewhat lax. This is because the posterior cruciate ligament is lax in extension. And it's very difficult to imagine how the posterior cruciate ligament can be made tight in extension and not too tight in flexion. What is not modeled here are the collateral ligaments. But if the collateral ligaments aren't so tight that they prevent the femur from moving forward, posterior to anterior force moves the femur forward. And that posterior to anterior force ends up on the extensor mechanism, which is trying to restrain the femur from moving forward. In a posterior cruciate substituting knee, here we've modeled the posterior cruciate substituting knee so that the cam and spine engage at 20 degrees of flexion. But most posterior cruciate substituting knees do not engage at this point, and the anterior posterior stability is entirely based on how the condyles fit with the tibial geometry. But even when the cam and spine might engage, still a posterior to anterior force moves the femur forward on the tibia and could result in increased loads on the extensor mechanism. A fully AP conforming knee prevent the posterior to anterior loads from moving the femur forward, thus sparing the extensor mechanism of some of that force that it would have to generate to pull the femur backwards. However, if the fully conforming implant is fully conforming all the way across the top of the tibia, like this roller in trough, rotation is constrained. Not only does the rotation require more force, but the actual point of rotation, the point of zero velocity of that rotation, is not defined on the top of the tibia. Now this diagram from Freeman demonstrates that the medial side stays more stable, the lateral side moves forward and backward, that the point of zero velocity for rotation is more often in the medial side than on the lateral, and so a solution to this can be an implant which is more stable on the medial side than the lateral side. In this video, the medial side is on the far side, the lateral side on the near, and although this is an artist's rendition, it attempts to show that there will be no forward motion of the femur on the tibia because of the ball and socket on the lateral side. And this is particularly true in the zero to 30 degree range where the anterior forces of gait are the greatest. For our clinical case, we look at infection markers, look at a bone scan, sometimes a bone scan using nuclear contrast, and if all these are negative, as they usually are, we ask the patients to use a posterior cruciate ligament brace, a brace that we would use for repair of the posterior cruciate ligament, and that is designed to keep the tibia forward on the femur at all times. If symptoms improve, that is, if anterior knee pain is better, then the patient is improved, and we consider this a positive test and we then offer the patient either continuing to use the brace for symptom control or a revision arthroplasty. Here we see the revision arthroplasty of this man using a medially more stable implant. If we compare now the lateral view of the preoperative and postoperative state, you can see because of the blacker region of the polyethylene between the femur and the tibia, that there is very little polyethylene to prevent the anterior translation of the femur relative to the tibia on the preoperative state, but a much larger amount of polyethylene on the right side of the slide after the revision surgery. 
looked up very much up close you can see this a little bit better and I do confirm that the patient before surgery did not have a patellar resurfacing and afterwards did have a patellar resurfacing and I accept the uh, conclusion that it might have been because of the patellar resurfacing that he decreased his discomfort but the patient sensed this new knee as one that had solved the problem of anterior knee pain and a feeling of instability. So the medial pivot is a posterior stabilized knee. A posterior stabilized knee is posterior stabilized because there's a cam and spine and it's mostly in the middle of the knee. The exact design of the cam and spine is different manufacturer to manufacturer. The medial pivot knee uses the whole medial femoral condyle as the cam and the anterior part of the insert as the spine. Thus, the posterior stabilization has been moved from the middle of the knee to the medial compartment, more appropriately stabilizing the knee on the medial side. For the posterior stabilized knee, only post and cam contact in the range where it contacts, usually starting at someplace around 40 or 50 degrees, is stabilized to anterior posterior motion. But for the medial pivot, it's posterior stabilized over the entire range of motion. So in answer to the question, the medial pivot is a posterior stabilized knee, posterior stabilized in the medial compartment. And we believe that this translates to better patients. Thank you.